Ladies and gentlemen, this for Gaming to the Comp video, we're going to be talking about AMD at Computex. This was one of those events where everyone had high expectations going in, but honestly, everyone was a little apprehensive. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the announcements, we're going to talk about the technology, we're going to talk about what was um, just overall shown off. And this includes the RX 480, the Zen processors, I'm going to give my take on the whole situation. So, first things first, I guess the only way to start is the 480. So, the 480, according to AMD, more specifically Rajar Kadori, was created for one primary reason. To make PC gaming cheaper. And boy did they manage to achieve that, with bells on. So, according to their own benchmarks, which obviously at the end of the day we'll be testing when their GPU is finally released and we'll know more when it's in the hands of the public, but from what we understand, the card falls within the performance of the GTX 970 and the 980, but Crossfire performance can be beating the GTX 1080 which was a rumor that I covered yesterday and is now confirmed once again on camera by AMD. That's bonkers because the GPU is $200. I'm going to repeat that one more time. 200 US dollars. That's for the 4 gigabyte model. The 8 gigabyte model is 229 US dollars. I I'm shocked at that pricing. There's rare times where I can actually say something really startled me. That was one of those times, like when the PlayStation 4 announced it had 8 gigabytes of memory. I was shocked. When they announced this price, I was startled. I thought, once again, it was going to be much more expensive. Well, not much more, but I thought it was going to be $250 entry level. No, 200 That's for ricking insane pricing. And let's go into some of the specifications, shall we? I, I figure that's a good option. So, 12, sorry, 2,304 stream processors, 1,266 megahertz frequency, a performance of around 5.5 T-flops, and once again, 4 or 8 gigabytes of memory, 256-bit bus, with memory bandwidth of 256 gigabytes per second and a TDP of 150 watts. Oh, by the way, being released this month, June, <laughs> kind of militant there, AMD. The reason I'm so happy about this is because the price of PC gaming GPUs, as Raj Akadori mentioned, is really prohibitive. There's a limit of how much money people could spend. And honestly, to two, the two to three hundred dollar crowd are the biggest. They make up like eighty percent of folks who are buying GPUs. Honestly, how many people can afford to buy the ten eighty that are owned by the the Titans? Yeah, sure. Everyone loves. Everyone drools over the ten eighties. Everyone drooled about the nine eighty. Everyone drools about the the Titans. But most people cannot afford them. Um. And it makes virtual reality more expensive. I do grant you, however, virtual reality has other cost factors. For example, you know, the headset. But still, it's one of the pieces of the puzzle. And at least if one thing's cheaper, when the other things eventually become cheaper, it's not too much of a big deal. And even if you have no interest in virtual reality, the fact of the matter is, one of these GPUs, let's say the 200 US dollar one, inside your PC on a 1080p TV is absolutely awesome. I mean, it, it's gonna it's gonna be damn impressive. Perhaps one of the more interesting factors with all of this is that AMD are touting a performance per watt increase of up to 2.8 times. Now, those are based upon the 1.7 times with FinFET 14. Plus as well, a lot of it is their new architecture and features. Now, we already know some of their new architecture and features. For example, memory compression, which does pretty much what it says on the tin. It compresses data inside the memory while it's being shuttled around. Improved shader efficiency, hardware scheduling, which obviously you're just better at, well, 
scheduling instructions across the various shaders. Primitive discard accelerator, which, well, means that it's going to do a test very early on when a scene's being created, whether an object will be visible or not. So let's say for the sake of argument, you have a trash can in a scene, but you are at an angle where a car is obscuring that, do you draw the trash can? No, you don't draw the trash can, in, you know, if you are actually painting it on a canvas. But sometimes the GPU does do stuff like that. So theoretically, primitive discard acceleration will help that. And it basically means that there's going to be DirectX 12 feature sets, such as conservative rasterization. Um, that's basically what all of that means. And it's good. Because, obviously, AMD also are pointing out stuff like HDR support or full HDR support. We're going to have support for the latest displays. and It's all cool stuff. All very cool stuff. I'm interested to see how it's all going to perform in reality. Because, you know, imagine for $200, US dollars, you've got a card which can actually compete with the GTX 980-ish in performance, which was a bloody expensive card on launch, but two of them can basically keep up with the GTX 1080. That's absolutely just crazy to me. And I really want to see what AMD do to the high-end part. Speaking of which, interestingly, there was not a 480X announced. I originally had thought that there was going to be a 36 CU unit, compute unit, which was going to be the 480, and then a 38 or a 40 uh, compute unit version, which was going to be the 480X. That wasn't announced. Whether in six months from now, three months from now, two months from now, we'll see that. Whether AMD don't feel confident yet on the yield, or whether that's just the maximum configuration of Polaris 10, Fuck knows. I don't know, and they've not said. So, unfortunately, all we can do is just guess. But I've got to say, the GPU looks premium. And if you saw that, if you saw the if you saw the design, you're not going to think to yourself, eh, that looks like a cheap piece of crap. Which is often one of the things you do associate with cheaper GPUs. As of the time I'm recording this, there are still some questions regarding the GPU. For example, the 1266 MHz is a screenshot that was taken courtesy of Tech Power Up. Unfortunately, there is some ambiguity, and once again, as of the time I'm recording this, whether those clocks are standard, whether they're boost, or whether there's any overclocking uh, shenanigans going on. But assuming that they're base clocks or boost clocks, that's pretty damn impressive. It means, theoretically, we should start to see pretty damn impressive overclocking. Even if you see 5 or 10%, theoretically, that should put you quite comfortably at the 980 level of performance. Will this card compete with the GTX 1080? Probably not, in my opinion, for folks who have the cash. Because if you've got that level of cash... 500 US dollars ish you probably would be better to just go with the 1080 in most instances unless you've got a free sync monitor or something simply because you one GPU in terms of efficiency in terms of ease of use is always better with all of that said if you're fairly strapped for cash now and you decide to buy the 480 and then three months later you've got the cash to buy another 480 you're not going to be upset. Let's, let's just be honest. So, I'm I'm pretty happy. I think that the... I think the announcements for the GT... For the... I was about to say GTX. For the RX 480. Are... Pretty much what I'd hoped for. There's not much more I could have asked for AMD to do. And I think it's going to shake the market up quite, an, quite a massive amount, if I'm honest. I need to talk about Zen. So unfortunately we didn't get any benchmarks, which I had really hoped that we would see some benchmarks, even if they didn't compare it against, let's say, an Intel system, let's say Haswell or Skylake, I'd really hoped that we'd see something. However, there were some videos that were being actually run, or rather playing, on machines that were using Zen. Um, 
Now, videos aren't exactly a great indicator of performance, but it does show that engineering samples are working, that they've taped them out, that the cores aren't crashing randomly, and that they're confident enough to at least show things and demo things running on Zen hardware. Admittedly, CPU utilization running something in VLC is not exactly going to crash most systems, but that's not the point. It shows that they are working on the hardware. Lisa Su also confirmed that we're going to see eight cores, multi-threading, and obviously a return to high-end desktop. And it's going to be scalable as well, so we should see them in other solutions, for example, mobiles, in servers, we'll see them in laptops. After Bristol Ridge is finished, we will see the introduction of various Zen APUs, which is something we kind of knew about anyway, but it's good to hear, once again, official confirmation. Sue also mentioned that we will see much more information over the next few months about Zen. At the moment, however, the company has reiterated that they have sent samples out to their big partners, which obviously would be the, the Dells of the world and the various server manufacturers. So whether you're talking about the desktops, notebooks, servers, or maybe even potentially embedded, they are getting good feedback. They are being told, hey, we're actually really pleased with what you're showing off here. Now, my personal hope for Zen, and this is not necessarily performance related, but my overall personal hope is that we see AMD being super competitive to Intel, but they basically do very much the Polaris way. So even if they are slightly behind on a per thread basis, their cost for all of those threads is really good. And AM4, obviously as a, um, as a platform, is super scalable in that you can switch from an APU to a Zen-based CPU without too much difficulty. I'm kind of looking forward to all of that, if I'm honest. I also want to spend just a moment talking about AMD's other stuff. I think the company did it in a really good way. It wasn't just like, yeah, we helped do this, we're done. I think that they did it in a very smart way. They're pretty much telling the world, hey, now that our technologies are in our, in our games consoles and basically we're doing really well with asynchronous computer and stuff, Eh, we're not doing too badly now, are we, guys? And I thought that was quite a nice touch. Basically, they are, in their own words, and not quite their own words, but paraphrasing somewhat, they're trying to make it a lot easier for console developers to leverage PC hardware and PC ecosystems. We knew about that anyway, um, it to a degree, but... I mean, all you had to do is look at the company's history. We knew that they were trying to do that. But the fact that they actually went on stage and said that that's what we're doing with our architecture, we're building it to make games easy to migrate from. And we're building it so that PC gamers can have the best of both worlds. They can have the performance and hardware potential of a PC, which obviously will ruffle stomp any console. Maybe maybe the Scorpio and Co-op do pretty damn well. We don't know. But um, at the moment, anyway, PC hardware is ruffle stomping the, uh, the consoles. But you've also got the added benefit of console-like architectures, or console-like development, rather, in terms of it's going to be a hell of a lot easier. So you're going to be able to leverage the various tricks and tip and uh, techniques, for example, like coding to the metal, like being able to utilize asynchronous compute, like being able to have a more streamlined development and take that and put that onto PC. And that's obviously a really good thing for developers because it means that they're going to be able to make fantastic looking gaming experiences, but also you've got the benefit for gamers who theoretically should get much smoother ports. And once you saw Doom running, and you saw it running at like 60, 70 frames a second, oh boy, it's going to be exciting stuff. Am I, am I saying that AMD are going to have a clear run of it? Am I saying that they're going to beat Intel? Am I saying they're going to beat NVIDIA? 
I don't know. We're going to have to wait to see what the GTX uh, 1060 put out, what A what uh, AMD are going to face from Intel in terms of the um, desktop and other markets. But I feel that they did a really good job at Computex. And um, I think the only things I've got to concern myself with now, three things. One... What are they going to do for the high end? Because ultimately, the high end doesn't necessarily sell the most units in terms of numbers, but the high end helps to lead the flagship. Because if a company can say that they have the fastest product, people gravitate to even the lower end products, which to me absolutely makes no sense. It's like if you've got the fastest GPU, but the other company has a faster GPU at the price point that you can afford what's why wouldn't you go for that one it just it always baffles me that that's how customers minds work but it is what it is and then you've got the um what actually is Polaris 10 going to perform like when we get it you know when reviewers get it when you get it in your machine and finally what is going to be the real performance of zen and how is it going to compete and what configurations is it going to be what are the prices that type of thing in other words is it good? If those questions are answered favourably, I feel really confident with AMD. And I'm not saying that once again they're going to beat NVIDIA. I don't think they're necessarily going to beat Intel um, in terms of they are better. Because I honestly don't think a lot of the time there is a best company. I think it's all horses for courses based upon your price and amount of cash you've got to spend. But I think they're going to be really competitive. And uh, I really look forward to seeing it. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.